This is not a usual format for me. Usually I'm in nature and I give these talks in nature, much more intimate somehow. I come bearing two gifts. Only my main, most important gift is not from me. I'm the middle person here, maybe a messenger. I'm talking about the gift of nature, by nature, from nature, to all these children, all the species that make it nature whole. And by nature, by the way, I mean the natural world. We are one, one species, one of many. Actually, we are one of 8.7 other millions of species, eukaryotic species, those species with the cells which have a nucleus. We are a very young species compared to many, too. We are very young compared to the millions of species that have roamed the Earth. We are also very young compared to the millions other that are living today. All together, us included, all those species and the land that we live on, we are the fabric of life. I'd like to remind us today that nature is not a faraway concept. It's not something to protect from afar. It's right here. It's in our cities. It's in our park and reservation. It is in our streets. It is in our yards. It's even in our house. Protecting it starts here and now. The natural world is all around us. Nature is life. It is the air that we breathe. It is the water that we drink. It is the soil on which we walk, on which we build, and from which we feed. That soil that is made of the billions of individuals of those millions of species that have died since the beginning of time, nourishing relentlessly the earth and sustaining life today. The natural world is hurting. We are one species and maybe the only one that has strayed away from the good, living, livable path. Our ingenuity, our boldness, our exuberance, our foolishness as a species made the environmental crisis that we and our children are facing today. We forgot that we're actually a manifestation of nature. The natural world is hurting, but together we can change that. We can act and get back to that livable path. Nature is here, it is there, and everywhere. And we humans are part of it. It is only together attentive, humble, respectful, empathetic, and compassionate that we can make a difference. And that we can really bring us back to where we belong, being an integral part of nature. Now, my gift to you are three little stories, local stories, three simple stories that hint towards that rewarding path. My stories bring positive element to the bigger story, three stories. My first story is about paying attention. It is about the power of seeing, the power of listening, the power of being in nature. I'll get to it. My second story is about humility. It is about the power of knowledge, of knowing, but also the power of acceptance, of not knowing. And it's fine, as long as we are respectful. I'll get back to that one too. My third story is about community, connecting, sharing. sharing. This is about the power of us together on that path. Off script all little stories that I usually tell when I'm in nature to the people. So my first story is about paying attention. We do a lot of things in the area. I spend a lot of time in the Middlesex Fells, but we're also at Fresh Pond, we're in Somerville, we're pretty much everywhere. Right? That day, I think that was the 25th of March. Kathy's team, so we have different teams studying the timing of things in nature, was her, there close to Long Pond with their team. And we just had passed, so 25th of March is the time where the maples start to get out, right? They start to bloom. What we capture when we look at the timing of things, we are looking at the buds, we are looking at the flowers, we are looking at the color of the leaf, the intensity of the leaves in the canopy. The maples just had started to swell, right? We passed it, 
We looked on the sassafras along the palm, as well as the sweet pepper bush, looking at the little fruit that were still hanging at the end of the winter in their little capsule. We continued on the path. We passed some low bush blueberry, huckleberries. There is a chestnut, an American chestnut that we look at regularly, still dormant at this time of the year. We're hopeful that maybe it will be a survivor, a survivor of um, the American chestnut blight. Who knows? We don't know yet. We will continue on the pass, and there is a little nook close to the pond. Usually in this little nook, there is a little bullfrog that peeped during the year, too early at this time. And we were arriving at our mountain laurel, a beautiful deciduous tree that is actually an evergreen. It was still lush. We looked at it. Cassie took some data, as well as Sarah, Yvonne. And we had with us that day Sherry. She goes by the name of Sherry. But her true name is Xiao Shen. She's from China. She was our past intern from the fall, but she likes to come back with us. She found somehow a welcoming community where she can learn with us and be together. I like this mix of, mix of generation together. I was looking at the pond again because usually at this time, the eastern painted turtle can start to come out. They were not there that day. Right next to that mountain laurel, which, by the way, very soon are going to blossom, and you can see this fused petal, right, this kind of cup-like flowers, uh, which is going to be beautiful, but it was too early. But right next to this mountain laurel, there is a rock. On top of that rock, and all on the side, there are rock polypodies, these ferns. I like to flip them around to look at the spore when they're out. And then I hear Chao Shen saying to me, Claire, what's that? And she points at the bottom of the rock, and there was a patch of green. And sprinkled through that green, which are a moss, which were moss, mosses, there were little tiny two millimeters. I talk in millimeters. <laughs> I don't know what it is in inches, but very, very small little grape structure, right? They are the fruiting bodies. That's how I call them, fruiting bodies of that moss. And I light up, and I say, oh my god, they are apple moss. And I looked, there was something on it. I kneel down, I take my magnifying glasses. We all have magnifying glasses as well as binoculars when we are in nature. And they were a little slug. And this is one of the pictures in your booklet. Sadly, not in color. Come to see me after. And you can see this little slug among this little grape-like structure on that moss, living their life. I like this story for two reasons. We had passed that rock about 200 times. At least I did. And never I saw that patch. That patch must have been there. I missed it. So focused I was at this level, or far away, or on the mountain oil. So the point being that, you know, if you look, if you look, if you shift your gaze a little bit, you're going to see something else, something marvelous, something beautiful. The other thing that I like about this story is that I had passed it. Cassie had passed it. Yvonne and Sarah and Lisa, we didn't see it 200 times or so. Sherry did, a young one. What I like is a mix of communities, a mix of genders, the mix of cultures together, learning together. That was my first story. The power of seeing, the power of listening, the power also of being together. Right. Second story is a more personal story. That was, I would say, towards the end of April or May. I think it was the end of May, the first year of the pandemic. We were just coming out of quarantine, and finally we could be at least two in the field. I was with Cathy again, happened to be at Long Pond again, doesn't need to, we are doing a lot of other things elsewhere. And we were very happy to be together on the path again, looking at the timing of things in nature. So we had passed that mountain Noel. we were on the other side of the pond, on the upper side of the pond. Cathy was looking at the plants, and me, at this time of the year, the end of May, I start to look at arthropods, insects and spiders, on some of the species of trees that we are monitoring. Cassie had to go. After three hours, she decided to go. We were really, really spending a lot of time together there, being quiet together in nature. And then I stayed a little longer. I usually get lost you know, in time and space very easily when I am in forest or meadows. And suddenly I hear a squeal up above in the canopy. I see some movement. I stopped, I look, there is a mass in the trees behind the needles of the eastern white pine. And what do I see? I see a fisher. This is one of your other pictures in uh, the booklet. 
you can see that there is a mass behind you know, a tree. That's a fissure. That's actually a mother fissure because the noise that I was hearing was the squeal of the little one that she was trying to shove down a cavity. Right? He wanted to get out, she didn't want. I don't know why. And then she left, and then the little one was squealing. I had a hard time to see him. And then she changed her mind. I think that for a while we stared at each other. I think I startled her, she startled me too. Tons of questions were coming through my mind, tons of questions I had absolutely no answer to, and it was fine. The thing that I felt a little bit sad because I felt like I interrupted her somehow, I was so quiet, a naturalist is somehow you know, a disruptive force in the forest because we are very quiet, right? So we startle, even if we don't want to. But I startled her, but it was also very humbling because in that moment I saw that, or I was reminded that mothers, there are many other mothers that take care of their kids or their little one, wants to protect them, and we are not different, right? So that's a very little, it's a moment that I will cherish my entire life, to see this fisher. I had seen them before, but I had never seen this little interaction. Usually they are elusive to see uh, in the wild. And I'm talking in the wild, I'm talking of the middle sex. That's right here, right here in our area. Right? So that was my second story. For me, a story of humility. Right? My last story, I love this story. And that's where Kathy was. She, Kathy is a member of this parish, and she comes often to our forest exploration. We do exploration. It does not need to be in a forest, but usually we are in some settings. And we invite the people to come with us. Usually we are in small groups because we don't want to overwhelm the systems in which we walk, in which we are guests. Right? So this one was, again, in the Middlesex Fells, more in the Greenwood area. Right? And, but actually, it happens twice a month in different locations of the fells. And we are there, a few of the Iwan naturalists together. We invite the people to be on the trail with us. We like to be as a little group of naturalists because it becomes a discussion among the naturalists. And this is a natural form where people can communicate with one another. If I was just lecturing like, I'm not lecturing today, but if I was the only speaker, then it invites the people to be silent. You're all silent right now, right? But when you start to have a conversation with other naturalists or other people, then the discussion, people are, it's more inviting. So we like to do that on the trail. And what do we do? What do we see? Everything that is in season, right? So that's why we do that the entire year, even, even in the dead of winter, because there is always something to see out there, right? It has become a tradition now that at the end of each of this exploration, in the forest, in meadows, in gardens, in the cities, we ask all our guests, one at a time, to tell us what do they like, what was their favorite moment. For some, it might be the wasp that you see in your little booklet and that might have passed on the Zoom um, prompt. This is a tiny wasp, two millimeters, again, millimeters, very small. Not all wasps are like the big one that we know. They're very important to our ecosystem, right? Beautiful one, small, tons of them, right? and just there, unassuming. For other people, it could be the gall. You see in your booklet, there is also a little urn on the edge of an oak leaf. It looks like a little cup, a little bowl of some sort, actually. The inducer of that gall is a wasp of that, that specific one. Right? So, so for some people, just noticing that you have this kind of external structure that now harvest house and food for the little thing inside a larva was you know, the thing that enlightened their moment. For some other, it's to learn about the fungi and all the network under the tree communicating, allowing communication between the trees and other species in the forest floor. Right? For some, it might be that the brain of the chickadee grows by 30% in the fall time in order to remember where he will cache all these little seeds for surviving during the winter. And then come spring, the brain shrink in size, shading, shedding somehow, coming back to a kind of a blank slate in order to allow other organ to take over. Right? Nature is wonderful that way. Or for some other, last one, it's also in your booklet, you're going to see a little flower, an hepatica. I heard Joe talking about the daffodil. This hepatica, this little flower, is a spring ephemeral. They are very short lived and they grow in the forest floor. Climate is really uh, having a hard effect on them. They have less time to flower. 
But what is beautiful and what some people like is to hear about the special relationship between this plant and its disperser. There are not necessarily bees, but ants. They collect the seeds, they go in their burrows, eat some of the fatty part, and here's a seed in another area and can grow. All the stories that the people bring, all our guests bring, and our naturalists too, actually show different aspect and show that everything is interdependent, that actually it is a system. Some other, as well, as part of our guest, love the idea that we were all together discovering, discussing, and asking more questions than, than we were really answering them. We are a system, we're all interdependent. We love these walks because we love this conclusion to see and to realize and to see that the people really enjoy being together and being part of something together and feeling that they can do something together. Right? That was my last story. So that was a story about community, connecting and sharing and the power of us to being together. So I want to tell you again one thing, just to loop around, right? Yes, the natural world is hurting, but together we can change that. We can act and get back on that livable path, right? Nature is here and there and everywhere, and we humans are part of it. It is only together, attentive, respectful, humble, empathetic and compassionate, that we have a chance to make a real different difference and that we have a chance to get us back to where we belong, which is being an integral part of the natural world. The journey is now and I invite you all, if you are not already, to be part of that journey with us. <laughs>